bold threat from Iran after a key figure in its nuclear program is assassinated. Tehran blaming the United States and Israel for a car bomb that killed one of the regime's top nuclear scientists, vowing to, quote, persist in punishing the perpetrators and those supporting them behind the scenes. This is the third murder of an Iranian nuclear scientist in just two years. Joining me now, Texas Congressman and Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Now there is a real question about the position we're in, because there have been three guys assassinated over there. A fourth was attempted, and Iran is vowing to retaliate. They blame Israel, but they also blame us. Our Secretary of State says we had nothing to do with it. Israel saying the same. Uh, should we be doing this if it is us? And what should we do if Iran <laughs> retaliates? Well, obviously, if we're doing it, we shouldn't be doing it. But this is an act of terrorism, and we should empathize with them. They are victims of terrorism, and we have condemned all terrorism. Obviously, the Iranian government uh, wouldn't be killing their own uh, scientists. So, yeah, we should have great empathy for them. And if we haven't done it, we should prove to them or give them all the reassurance that we have not done it. And to the answer to your questions, if we are doing it and participate, we ought to quit. That wouldn't make any sense, uh, you know, participating in violent acts, which would be equivalent to terrorism at the same time, uh, that's all we talk about is going around the world on a global war on terrorism, so there'd be no consistency there. Well, now we may have a problem on our hands because if it, you know, our Secretary of State says it wasn't us, but Iran seems to believe it was us, and now they're vowing to retaliate, uh, perhaps against Israel, perhaps against us. What do we do if they assassinate a, an American in response? Well... It's a, it's a real mess. We should have done a lot less a lot sooner. Everybody knows we have CIA agents uh, maneuvering in Iran. Uh, we had a drone shot down, maybe two drones shot down over Iran. We're getting ready to put very punishing sanctions on them and disrupting the oil market. And, you know, they're a very weak nation. They have to, they're, they're responding in a natural way. But they, they don't want trouble because they know they can be annihilated in about 40 minutes, you know, either by Israel or the United States. This idea that they're looking for a fight, I think that that is all a concoction of the West, so prepare the people uh, for, for a war that's likely to come when we have a policy like this. I think it makes the perfect argument for my non-interventionist foreign policy that we shouldn't be engaged in stirring up trouble. And all these things that we do to try to get rid of the regime in, in, in Iran right now actually plays into their hands, because once we enter fear or put on sanctions, this brings the Iranian people together. They're having an election in a few months, and Ahmadinejad is not that strong politically. But when we interfere as an outsider, those dissidents who are struggling to get control of their country and their government and have a more sensible government, we have to drive them into the arms of the government. Just as we were brought together after 9-11, we were no dissenters. We all came together. There were no Republicans or Democrats. So we have to try to understand how our policies actually actually do the opposite of, we, what, of what we intend them to do. We have an impression in this country that they do want trouble, though, because of threats like the one they made to, stret, to shut down the Strait of Hormuz, in, in, through which one-sixth of the world's oil supply flows. If they did that, if you were the president, Congressman, and they shut down the Strait, what would you do? Well, I, I, w I would tell them I'm not going to put sanctions on them. That's their response. They're not going to close down the Straits of Hormuz. That would be, uh, you know, self-destructive. But they have to say something to try to make us think differently about putting devastating sanctions that's going to really hurt their people, and it's going to hurt the economy. It's going to hurt their uh, Eastern Europe are going to suffer. That's why there's hesitation right now about this. But to say that because they are retaliating with a so-called threat is the problem, I say that is the consequence uh, of the problem and we should think more broadly than that and uh, I but I think we shouldn't stir that up to the point that anybody thinks they really want to close down the Straits Hormuz or they can I think that's way out of proportion to what they're able to do they're trying to get attention on how the world is trying to punish them right now and we're not permitting the dissidents who would like to overthrow uh, their, their current government to do it because they're unifying all those people because there's too many foreigners trying to interfere with their uh, internal affairs.
Congressman, let's talk politics for a minute. Uh, we had Scott Rasmussen on at the top of the hour, and one of the polls that he just came out with today talks about uh, the, the person, the voters in South Carolina believe would be the weakest opponent to President Obama. Uh, you came in first in this poll. 33% thought that you would be the weakest. Huntsman second with 22nd, 22% uh, of the vote. What do you think about that? That, that it's an electability question whether whether people <laughs> believe you could beat President Obama. I think that's a totally unreliable uh, polling because uh, he, he might have talked to a, a few Republicans, but just the other day there was a poll out that showed that I was absolutely equal to uh, Obama in a national race. So I, I have a lot of support with Democrats and independents and, and Republicans, obviously the way we did in, in New Hampshire. But to say that I'm the weakest candidate, I think is such a distortion of reality. But if you talk to all the people, all of a sudden, you know, I, I a lot of people would like to make it sound like I wouldn't be able to be competitive with, with Obama. But the truth is, is that I'm the candidate that can actually challenge him on foreign policy. All the promises he made and never followed through, all the promises that he made on the protection of privacy and, 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 and the change of laws at home. I mean, the, the base of, the, of, of Obama's base is very, very weak, and they're, they're disenchanted with him. And there's no reason why I can't maintain the base in the Republican Party, because I'm the fiscal conservative. I'm the only one that has talked about cutting, uh, cutting any spending. Everybody else talks about, you Got know, it. tinkering around the Got edges. Got to run, Congressman. Six, six seconds to a heartbreak, but thank you so much for being here. All the best. We'll be right back.